Welcome to the Silver River Center for Chair Canning. We are a seat weaving school and museum in Asheville, North Carolina. Today we'll be teaching you how to do our method for weaving a splint reed herringbone seat. We'll be using a half inch flat reed, a coil is a pound. It'll do an average size chair most of the time. You usually want to figure a pound, pound and a half per chair so that you don't come up short. In order to make the material pliable enough to weave with, you're going to want to soak it for 10 to 15 minutes in warm water. We find that it's easiest to soak an entire coil at once. So I'm snipping off the ribbon and then dropping the full coil in. And we're gonna wait 10 or 15 minutes and that entire coil will be ready to use. When joining the material together, because these are certain lengths of the material People do use a stapler. We don't like to use that method because it punctures holes in the material and that's a spot where the material can possibly break. We prefer to use a wire wrap. Being a part of a class is an important thing. And so we want, what we want to do today is invite a student in to learn right alongside you as you're working on your project at home. So come on in, bring your chair, and let's start talking about splint read. Okay. So let's get you to figure the inside and the outside. Okay. That to me looks cleaner mm -hmm. than this side. Okay, Perfect. so I would say this side would be down, and we That's would right. weave it like that. Correct. So you want to keep the furry side to the inside of the chair. Okay. All right. To start out, this is a warp weft method. So the warp is you're wrapping the material around the rails front to back, and then the weft going side to side is where we actually start weaving. So the warp that we're putting on, you're gonna take your material, wrap around, and the tension is important. You, if you go too tight with it, then when you start weaving the material, it's taking up little, bit, little bits of slack each time and if it's too tight, it is impossible to weave through. You wanna give a little bit of slack in the material, so you're pulling it taut. You wanna help account for the fact that most of the time, the rail height is different, so your material doesn't wanna take a big dive down either. I like to, that's about the tension that I want. Okay. So there's some slack in there, and it seems like more slack than you think. You want to do a wire wrap right about here, a couple inches in. Okay. And then that's going to be the beginning of your warp. Got it right in the middle. Perfect. Once. Boom. And you're good to go. And wrapping it around. You want to keep your tension the same as you go. Your clamp, this is your third hand. Correct. You want to keep the tension, so let's clamp there. Okay. And we're going to use either a pair of snips or a pair of scissors and cut off any of the excess. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you're going to take this strand. Yeah, and since this is the, the bottom, it's going to be facing up. That's correct. Okay, I so see. So you're going to come in this way. Okay. And do another wire wrap. Okay, got it. Okay, now that, that splice is done, okay. you're gonna continue wrapping the warp, okay. keeping your tension about the same. Okay. 
and it's never going to be exactly the same. All you right. just want it as close to the same as you can. Myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And we don't want to splice on the top, so correct. I would clamp it here. Perfect. Okay. Okay. When we are doing the splice, I usually cut off any of the excess. Okay. And cutting here so that you can splice in the middle. This is a nice long strand. You're gonna go a long way with it. So another splice and continue wrapping the board. So we want all of these strands to be bumped right next to each other. And now is also an opportunity to kind of look at your tension. And it looks like we've got a strand here that's a little loose. We're going to move that extra slack around a little bit. Cause, and they're ne you're never going to get the same amount of tension every time. That's just not going to happen. But we do want these guys to push close together. All right, we can probably fit two more in. Okay. So here at the end, we're going to flip your chair upside down. Give you a little easier access. In the same way as we started, where a single strand is attached to itself with a wire wrap, we're gonna do the same here. So this strand, you're gonna wire wrap onto the strand next to it, and that's gonna be your finishing point. And then you can clip off the excess. Okay, just right here? Yep, right there. Okay, great. Fantastic. Okay, today we're weaving a three over, three under herringbone pattern. Your warp strands are running front to back. Your weft strands are running side to side. When I say three over and three under, I mean that you're weaving with your weft strand. This is three over the warp, three under the warp, over the warp, under the warp. The herringbone is a stair step pattern as you come across. And so each time you're taking a step backwards, step backwards, step backwards. And that gives you the stair step. When you, before you start weaving, a lot of times this material has dried out and in order to make it a little less brittle, we do put a little bit of a spritz on it. You don't have to soak the material, but that's again gonna give you a little bit more uh, pliability as you start weaving through this material. Now you don't wanna soak it, we've got foam in there. We don't want it to make it super wet. So, in. We're starting on the bottom, we're starting on the back of the chair. I want the end of the strand to be buried under here on these last three strands. And the single strand that's two that becomes one, you can treat as two at this point, but eventually becomes one. So if I'm under these three, I'm over these, under these, over these three, under, over, under. And remember you have a front side and a back side. I've got it set up right. so that your, you know, the downside is correct at right. this point. So now that I've been under two, I'm going to go no, over three. three. Yep, that's yep. right. Okay. Now it's over three, under three. Over three, under three. Now we have the first round run on the bottom. We're going to flip the chair up, right side up. Okay. Make sure that these guys don't twist so that you're keeping the right side up and there's not a twist in your material. At this point, you can choose to start three over or three under. It's entirely up to you. And your pattern is, is the same. Let's start three over. So three over, three under, three over, three under, three over, three under. And Go ahead and pull it all the way through. I kind of hold it on the rail okay. and then pull it taut. And 
pushing it back a little bit so that this is fairly straight. If anything, you want it to bow back just a little bit, just a hair. Back and ready to weave through the bottom. The herringbone pattern is a step back pattern. So if we were here last time with the three over, as you see, one, two, three, over, then we're gonna take, we're gonna step back a strand and it gives you a stair step back. That puts you over these three and you're under these three, over these three and under this last bit. And from here, after under, the, then it's three over, three yep. under, okay. from this side to the other. All right. Now we're back on the top side. The pattern is three over, three under, with a stair step backwards. So where's the next strand going to go? So I'm going to go over over two mm -hmm. and under three. And then it's all three. And then it's all threes to the right. okay. So that's under three and then over three. Okay. And then push them real tight yeah. together. While I have tension maybe. Okay. Either way. Either way, okay. That's right. If yeah. you look at where you were, right, and then step it back, step it back, and that's and where then I'm you going need to be. under again. That's right. right. Yeah, and then it's three. Yep, got it. So at this point, you're at the end of your strand. Similar to when we were doing the warp, we don't want our connection points to be on the top side. I'm going to trim off any excess. Eh, about. Something like that, looks good. Okay. We're gonna run this strand in the exact same pattern as the one here. And I want the tail end to be buried under. And all I'm gonna do is take this and pull it up on top of uh, the strand that's already there. Okay, so okay. we're making that strand longer. That's right. Okay. You're splicing together. We're just right. continuing that strand, and there'll be a double thickness right here, and no wire. At this point, the pattern itself locks everything together. So I would think I would go under three starting here. You would think correctly. Okay, I'm stepping back one, but I don't have a strand to step back to, so Start I can there. I can look at this. You were here last time, right? Take a step back. Take a step back, right? So it's going to be over. No, it's going to be under these three, and over these two, I believe. I'm going to look at it. See if it forms a step. Okay. So now I'll come to the center of the chair, find my step back. So it's going to be over these three, under these three, over two. You got it. Okay. Over two, out in the middle, under three, over three.
where there's a splice here and there's a tail if we can get that under oh. then it pins it down in right. place okay. and eventually these that are pinned down will be taking the wire off huh. okay. and the pattern itself holds everything together wow you're gonna want all that space when you get towards the front. Right. If this bow continues to bow up, it's too late. They, yeah. Right. The pattern always stays the same. So we're three over, three under, and you're taking your pattern here. You've still got that same stair step going on. Okay, so I'm over these three, right? under these three. So all you're gonna do is, and this is a spot where using that ramp because there's so little space here and it's, it's tight. tight yeah so ready perfect okay now this next part we're just gonna tuck tuck that tail in and then pull it tall so we're three over three under three over one, one under, under. And then this guy is going to tuck just the tail into that last spot and hide it away. We can probably fit one more in on this side and one more in on this side. Yeah, partially way back. You, yeah, that's right. right. So okay. I'll let you do that. Okay. Okay. We're going to go ahead and weave these into the bottom side. Okay. So, spin. And we're just doing the exact same thing as we did on the top, but here on the bottom. And I want the tail to end under here. The tail of of this. I don't want all this hanging out. Right. So right. And then let that slide right underneath. Using the ramp. And we are putting these strands in now as opposed to once all the rest of this is filled in, because you don't have to weave through the tightness of all this. We're using the bit of pattern to to do that work for us okay Towards the end, when this is a lot tighter, it can get difficult to push the entire material across. Right. So, instead of pushing the whole thing, you use an inchworm. And that is, you pull a little extra material and then use this loop. And as long as you don't bend it back where this is really where crimped. Where it crimps, right, okay. Over. And it's a lot easier to manipulate than trying to push the whole thing. Okay. Just another, again, right now it's not that big of a deal, but as this gets tighter and tighter, that inchworm technique will come in handy. Yep. Every over and under is a victory. <laughs> so just 
get ready. Yeah, and I knew it much more difficult at this point than it was. Right. So now that we've got a little bit more material in, we've got enough space in here to put the other gussets in. We were fortunate in that we could get enough space to put another strand. If you couldn't, let's say it was only that much, you would never double them up. You would have to take that extra space and kind of distribute it throughout the chair. Okay. And that's the same for the sides and the back as well. Should I have pulled it beforehand, or you think it'll come through? It's hard. Yeah. You could have oh, chosen. Kind of, yeah. You could have chosen to weave halfway through okay. and, and pull, pull it. it. Yeah. Okay. It's but working. once you get it going, yeah. it should be all right. Okay. That's great. And then you can pull against yeah. the My tension finger. in your yeah. finger. Correct. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Nice. So pull the pull all the tension out of okay. it. Okay. Cut it to the length you want it, or right. you can just tuck the very end underneath yeah. that. Yeah. So last I can just bit. cut it to that length right there. I right? like that. Okay. I like that. All right. Right there. Yep. Finished product. Um, well done. Well done. It looks cool, man. Yeah. It's a it's a chair. Yeah. Well done. So this so is tomorrow we do what? We clean up the bottom, we'll, get rid of wires and things like that. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. We're and gonna shellac. clip we're yeah. gonna clip all these right. hairs yeah. and put a protective clear coat. Sweet. All right. So the chair's been sitting and drying overnight. Uh, and the next step is to take care of all of these little hairs that are sticking up. That happens when you're weaving the material frays a little bit on the edges. So any of the wire wraps that are showing, we want to take out. The ones that are buried in the pattern, we're not worried about at all. And at this point, if you'd use staples and you're trying to take the staples out so that you can't see them, you can damage the material even more, which is one of the other reasons we don't use staples. Using a sharp instrument, getting underneath the wire and making some space. Then coming with the wire cutters, snipping through all of them, and then pulling out all the wires that you've snipped. And it's like it was never there. If you have any long tails hanging out, then this one, you can actually tuck into the pattern. You might, if, to be more comfortable, give it a spritz, but this one I think will be good and we can just give it a tuck dry since we're about to shellac. Okay, good to go. So when we, the last thing after you've clipped and removed the wire is we like to put a clear protective coat. If you prefer using shellac, um, you can use any kind of clear protective coat, but shellac works nice with all finishes, and so it's a, a workhorse in the shop for us. It's an easy brush on. You are taking and just brushing on. When you get into the corners, I'm gonna let you do okay. this. If you get anything on the frame, right, just give it a quick wipe. Okay. So shellac the bottom, back to the top. The one thing to watch out about is that when you're doing the edges, you can get drippage, and so it's good to look from underneath and make sure there isn't a pool of shellac that's dripping. Okay. And as I mentioned before, quick, quick wipe on the rails because the brush can spatter. Okay.
So done, shellac everywhere. The cleanup is so easy. A little bit of the denatured alcohol. Um, okay. The shellac dries fairly quickly. You can speed up the process by putting it in front of a fan. Uh, we usually suggest 24 hours before you're actually sitting on it, although you could probably sit on it a lot sooner. So totally done. All right. Woo! Thank you so much. All right. And first splint reed chair, and it looks like you've done a hundred of them. All right.